on Facebook and we're live and it is new moon. And actually, I think the new moon is actually like three minutes after we end at 1 30. Well, what right. here, but right, it's three minutes after we're done. Um, mm -hmm. and and I do have to take care of my grandson, so I have to I have to skedaddle on time today. So yeah, no, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I love taking care of him. But I yeah. just just wanted to say to everybody that this has been one heck of a ride this past month. I missed everybody. Two weeks ago, I was sick. I am so much better now. I am I am back to my old self. And, you know, the self-care was important. And, you know, I hope that people take that and, and, you know, care for yourselves when you need to and be gentle and be easy and be positive, right? So <laughs> I know at times it was it's hard to be positive when you don't feel good, but the more yeah. you're not positive, the more you don't feel good. So that's right. It's a loop, isn't it? It is, it is a loop. And and it's hard to get out of it. And I really had to work through it. And you know, I'm I'm learning and practicing right along with everybody else. And God bless Mickey. She's right there coaching me on. Kate, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> rephrase that <laughs> well you know what we all need to, say that <laughs> we all need to hear our talks back to us right it's, well, it's that's what you do for me yeah well and and i hope that's what we do for each other as a collective yes. and um so here we are right on the edge of being the new moon so we are manifesting things so there's no way i was going to miss this one because i am doing well i feel great i am manifesting for the next you know time to come at least two weeks yeah. and yeah. um and and you know i'm i'm i am focused on good health right now um me too i feel i feel great actually and and uh Mickey, tell me what's been going on. I, I, I we haven't been on <laughs> a whole month, right? So we missed yeah. the, we missed the full moon. Last time we were together was again a new moon, and and we had some amazing um, out of body experiences. Yeah, and they've yeah. continued for me. How about you? Well, I had a couple of things happen that were quite mind blowing. The first of which was. Um, a meditation I did about a week ago where, um, I don't know how to even put it. I, I knew that I had to go to bed to get up early the next day for a medical appointment. But as usual, I had insomnia the night before. And so that means I had a lot of anxiety about, oh, you should have been in bed already. Oh, why don't you hurry up and go to bed? Oh, now you've only got so many hours. You know how we do that horrible countdown you know you you're running out of time oh your window of opportunity is shutting on you you know again you know, it's that get, negative talk so I knew I had to get to sleep by a certain time or I wouldn't be prepared the next day and as I obsessed and obsessed finally I got in the bed and I said well I'll count myself down I often use the sound of nice music to go off to sleep to if I'm anxious Mm -hmm. So I was going to put the music on, but I couldn't hear it because just as I started to count myself down to sleep, the man next door started hammering on the wall and we have a shared wall between the two houses and he's hammering just above my head. So I thought, oh, great. Oh, that's all I need. And then my higher self literally grabbed me by the throat and said, shut up. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Quiet quiet now listen you this is an opportunity you need to listen to what I'm telling you every time the hammer strikes listen to that sound what can you hear and I thought oh well this is a man fixing up stuff for his family he says yeah you haven't heard that in a long time well my husband had been sick for 12 years you know, I was his carer and everything. So there were normal things, quote unquote, about having a man about the house that I had not experienced in a long time. So it said, listen to the sound of what you're hearing. Look at the beauty of it. You're hearing a man that is 
actually doing something to show his family that he really loves and cares about them. Aww. So from then on, the meditation took on a whole different vibe. Yeah. And I found myself laying there smiling, literally smiling in the room all alone. And every hammer stroke brought another smile. You know, Aww. that memory of, oh, he's doing that. Oh, we're going to have such and such soon. Oh, because Jack used to make all kinds of stuff. He made me one of the most beautiful bars you ever saw, you know, with brass lighting and blah, blah, blah. So it was a lovely memory. And it taught me a lot about how you look at things. No matter <laughs> what it is, it might be pissing you off at the time. But you're the one carrying that, the vibe, you know, of however you're reacting. The thing itself, the hammer had nothing to do with it. Mm. Okay, so I had to get used to that. And in the other instance, um, I had this, you had a lot to do with this one. Where uh -oh. I had a couple of little medical things that I wanted to talk to the doctor about. And one of them in particular was a condition I've had since I was 26 and I'm now 76. So for 50 years, I've had this particular condition and all of a sudden the doctor says, well, there's nothing in your record about that. Why do you think you have it? And I got all indignant. What do you mean it's not that? I've had it for 50 years, blah, blah, blah. And when I mentioned it to you, he says, don't you think that might be indicating that it's being taken out of your life? And I thought, oh, that's just silly. I got, I've had this, so and so. But when I went, I've now been to three specialists who say it's not there. <laughs> oh, along with, I had a list of stuff, <laughs> and everything on the list was disappeared <laughs> right before my eyes. So I still have vestiges of the feeling. You know, we're talking about arthritis here. It's the main thing. But the type of it that was so malicious is gone. So that's I'm slowly wonderful. creating, you know, in my lab, that's what I had asked for. I asked for help from my other selves. And that's what they're doing. It's like, well, I know how to help you. We'll just take it away. You don't have it. Well, what do you mean I don't have it? <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> that's wonderful. And and we can all do that. I mean, we I'm all have our, we all have our lab now. We have our creation space. We have our yeah. meditation space. And I have to shout out to hi Audrey. She said hi. Hi Sugar Sugar. Have fun. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we can use our labs, you know, for ourselves. You know. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, I've, I've not had an experience like that, but two days ago, I, I actually was doing like formal meditation. I was sitting and I was trying to sit up mm -hmm. like the pearls mm -hmm. and, you know, like Buddhists do. And, um, and I, you know, I, I did what we do. I did three to one count. I went down the 10 steps and I laid on my couch in my meditation room and I sat up out of my body. I did one of those out of body things and I went to source and I asked source, I'm like, can I, as the source me be in more than one place at one time? And, and it, he, he, well, I'm going to say he, but source, yeah, I, I do feel it was male. It was a male voice, but it, it's like, well, you can see your body down there and here you are here. And I'm like, yeah, but this part of me, can this part of me go somewhere else? And almost like a holo, small hologram, something small like this, it showed me, me still caring for my ex-husband that I was still with him and, oh. and me and at different different me's the same age as I am now in different positions that you know one was a techie guru person oh. it was an artist another one was a homeless runaway probably was a hooker I don't know but <laughs> destitute, <laughs> you know, homeless and, 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 and in different relationships that have ended in the past, it, it showed me today as yeah. I, this age in all of those different places, 
right. in different dimensions. And, and it was quick. It was like a second here and a second there. And, you know, it, it took no time at all to see them. It just flash, flash, flash. And, and it was so amazing to realize, you know, that with every choice or every fork in the road that the fork I didn't choose right now right. to focus on is still moving forward right in in and learning the other part of it and right. and that was just amazing to me it's it's a strange feeling inside some of these times when the truth of our counterparts and our probable selves that whole thing about there's only the now it has implications that we're not used to looking at i mean yes. It's not so much that it's all new stuff, but I'm new to considering it. Right. And so right. it unfolds in my psyche in all kinds of ways. I am so busy processing stuff. And I I saw on um, uh, a forum that I'm on, a, a page that I watch, and they were talking about uh, how you process things and, and what you look at and the fact that the thing itself is neutral. It's you that adds all the emotion to it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I'm not used to, you know, we don't think of events, quote unquote, that way. The event has no idea how we're taking it or what the effect of it is on us. It just goes out there as an event. And then we choose how we experience it. I'm not used to there being any time to do that. I mean, you know, we see something, we react. Well, I'm slowing that down. I'm putting more of an interval there so that when the thing occurs, I have a split second to decide how I'm going to feel about it. And I found that almost everything that was bugging me in my life about others, about their attitude or their this or their that, almost all of it was something that I needed to simply adjust my reaction to. Hmm. Yes, it's true. The person was said something unkind. But mm -hmm. I didn't have to take it in. True. I didn't have to believe them when they said it. And most of the reaction of discomfort or anger or whatever has to do with the way we took it. Right. Okay. It doesn't mean they didn't mean it to hurt. It means I'm not going to give you the power to hurt me. Yes. What you said was unimportant because either you're unimportant or I shouldn't be paying attention to what you're saying mm -hmm. because, you know, right. and <laughs> that's a lot of power that you're holding to yourself instead of giving it away. Yeah, it, it's true. And, and even if people, even if people aren't doing whatever it is on purpose, um, I, I, take things very personally like I do <laughs> day is not going right I'm like oh my god what did I do wrong and did I say something and blah 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 so not to take things personally even if somebody is lashing out they just might yeah. need to you know unload and that's okay yeah. and and it's hard when you're someone that is someone that takes responsibility for even more than you should to not do that. And, and I've been working on that in the last month as well. So, well, I had to work on not allowing them to do it. I mean, when you said, and they may not have, you know, yeah. whatever, but yeah. they, you couldn't, uh, uh, you could let it go. No, I have to, part of my lesson is to learn to stop right then and say, ah, no, you can't say that to me. I'll talk to you later. Mm-hmm or whatever but and i have to react on my it, own behalf right it's so funny you say that because those things haven't cropped up when i've been working on this it's more of how i've reacted to past events right. i i mean i am in i'm so blessed and i'm in such a good space that there isn't a whole lot of um, negativity flowing towards me from the outside source. I do plenty of it to myself. Oh, you're so cute. You know. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I don't, I don't, you know, when I see a lot of negative stuff on Facebook, I, I just unfollow. Right. <laughs> Hello. Right. So I don't even react to it. I just take it out of my awareness, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. 
I want to ask Audrey, you know, have you been in the last month? Please type, you know, to us and yeah. we'll read it. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what, what has happened? I you know what others have gone through in this last yeah, month. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But care, you know, the biggest thing is the self-care and, and the self-growth. And it is all self-love. And and really, this is a time where God, we're releasing <laughs> stuff. Well, and we're learning. We're releasing stuff and we're, um, we're setting intentions for new, better, perfect things to come into our lives um and 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 it is happening and then you know we may have some setbacks like I had last month um I could not have been here I was so sick that day um mm -hmm. and and um and now everything is good again and and you can see I was bored right my hair I've cut it like five times <laughs> I'm like oh a little bit shorter oh a little bit shorter and then oh well I have to you know even it up here or there so now I've got like really short hair <laughs> I love it so oh much. thank you and it's so it's so easy to take care of I mean I wash it I fluff it and I let it dry <laughs> that's it that's it or I'll, I'll I'll sometimes put combs in it and that kind of gives me this little around my hair. so flattering Oh, thank you. Sometimes when I'm catching myself in the mirror, I see my grandmother. Oh, <laughs> I do. I, I so resemble her, especially her hair, her coloring. It was the Italian side. So yeah. All right. So Audrey says, I have a few worries about family members. I decided this morning to not dwell on it. Oh, yay. Very good. Dwelling is something we really can't do. Um, right. This brings more of Release. whatever. It brings more to us of whatever we're dwelling about. Uh, my friend Greg, God bless him, I love him to pieces. He's like, Kate, you gotta stop dwelling on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh God. and he's yes. right. He's so right. Yeah. Well, as a Scorpio, over and over and over, that is so true. God, can we obsess? We're already intense, but you give somebody five different doses of intense, I have to chill out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know how it works with Leo. But I'm 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 pretty like intense too. Audrey says exactly. That's yeah. one. Well, Audrey, I, I'm so glad that, you know, and, and when we realize these things ourselves on our own. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's when we know that we're really putting into right. practice the thing that we hear and the things that, you know, we believe Be because I believe all this stuff. But yeah. when it comes to me, sometimes I don't practice it. Um, that is changing. Yeah. Shortening that interval between when you learn about something spiritually, you find out that this X thing exists as a concept. And you take it on, you feel it, and make it fit, you know, with whatever you believe. And then there's a gap between when we actually start to use it. Sure. We know it and we like it and say, oh, yeah, okay, I believe that. But then we don't really change anything about the way we were thinking before. And you have to actively go in and say to yourself, I'm going to do it this way from now on. I'm going to think such and such, you know, take the responsibility for making that change. And that's what's coming home to me. I read Seth's stuff 50 years ago, but it's only within the last two years that I got most of what I should from it. You know, I mean, it's easy to run around spouting, oh, you create your own reality. You create your own reality while you're busy creating all kinds of crap. Mickey, oh. do you realize that it's been three years since? Oh. Uh huh. <laughs> it's been three years because we started Seth Talk in 2020 when COVID happened. Oh, yes. And three years. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. Time, time is just flying by. Um, I, and I only learned about the Seth material six years ago. So, um yeah Audrey goes wow <laughs> right yeah. and Audrey and Martin and and we had a wonderful group for that 
I don't know, a little more than a year. I guess we did it about a year and a half. Yeah. I ran into a group, shameless plug here. They didn't say, they didn't ask me to do it, but I ran into a group that has really astounded me with its positiveness. It just, they're posting about four or five times a day and it hits every time. I mean, I just, it's called Awaken to Oneness. Oh, okay. And I'm just so impressed with them. I love it. Now, not everybody thinks the same. It has all these people in its community where they all come out with these various ways of looking at being positive, being spiritually uh, awakened and so forth. Nice. And so you get to hear all these other ways that people are thinking. Mm -hmm. But it's this one guy guiding it all and keeping us coherent as a group. And I'm just astounded by the the things that are coming out, oftentimes they're coincidences, you know, to what's going on in your life. Like with you, you know, you and I are mirrors of each other. Never a coincidence. It was Ooh. so meant to be. And right. our Martin is on. Hiya, Martin. Oh, hello, Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't see Joe yet, do we? No, I haven't heard from Joe. Uh, okay. I thought maybe she would show up, but I'm I'm here alone in my healing area. And okay. As funny, you know, and, and this was our core when we did Seth talk. It yeah. was the four of us, you know. I we just feel people. like, you know, Audrey and Martin are pieces of me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I'm really spoiled about having you in my life at regular intervals. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, you know, I said to Mickey and I'm like, I would love to do a book study. And Mickey's like, really, you want to add one more thing <laughs> to your list? And I'm like, Mickey, I'm not even sure I can do the next, the next um right. hate talk. And she's like, I'm hearing that. Yeah. So, so I'm like, oh, I'm well, maybe we'll, not put that, we'll put that on the back burner for a while. And, and it's just I'm one of those things that I I was so thirsty for the conversation about the book. And and right. I was and I was thinking about the Seth material. That's what yeah. I wanted to do to read. And and I've been I've been rereading. Actually, I ordered it. It's it's on its way here today. I have it on my phone, but I don't mm. I don't have the paper copy. So I'm a paper copy is coming today so that I can yeah. go through it. But I, some, some of the things in it, like chapter 13 is all about health. And I sat and I reread chapter 13 yeah. I and I didn't feel good. When you told me to read it, and I, I'm just so thrilled by how right on the money it was, and I needed to hear it and see it at the time you brought it up, you know. But now, in terms of a study group, I simply don't have enough of me to contribute to that at the moment. I'm still trying to grapple with a lot of things. I'm getting back to a norm that I hadn't defined. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Oh my God, so, that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how Audrey and Martin are doing, but yes, this is a this is a new normal that I don't even know what normal is anymore. Yeah, right. Yep. And so I'm going slowly so that I don't put too much on my plate, because the one thing I do know about it is that it changes drastically during the day. What I need to do or think about uh, or act on is something that is very flexible. I have to be flexible for it because it's not as well defined as I would like. Mm -hmm. I'm not as good at responding on a regular basis to stuff. I'm kind of, at this point in life, I'm in here all alone, retired, and I can sleep as late as I please or wait until such and such a time to go to bed or, you know. And so there's not that rhythm that a lot of people have by being locked into certain times. Oh, right. Okay. It was so different when Jack was there and you were caring yeah. for him because you had a routine that you had to do every right. day. I had and to make sure that he had medicines at certain times and yep. foods at certain times and so forth. You know, Isn't it funny? Yeah. With freedom comes... <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it's, 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 and, and it's the same with me. I'm like, I am free. I don't have to be anywhere, do anything. And, um, and I'm like, where do I fit it in? Right. Right. So we're we're learning our new normals and, and they're changing. It's fluent. So much of my new normal 
It's about me enjoying the fact that I have the solitude. I meditate five or six times a day. Beautiful. For short periods. You know, it's a, a little thing. But now it has a profound, I have said it before and I'm going to say it again. It has a profound effect on your ability and the quality of your meditations. If you do it over and over and over and over at the beginning when you're learning, do it all kinds of times of the day. You don't have to do it long. Right. Just go to your level and then come right back out. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, our Bert Goldman, you know, that just reminded me of something. So our Bert oh, Goldman, Bert. there is one quantum jump that he would do. And he would have you do the three to one count, go down the steps, go and have, have your intention that you go through your quantum door and then jump back into your meditation <laughs> and then open your eyes and then do the three to one count. And, and then, and he, how do you right. do it three times? And each time you go deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and, you know, the thing is, is just to play with it, play with well, it. That's what he did when I met him. He mm -hmm. made us go through it over and over and over. And that was yeah. one of the silver mind methods too, is that mm -hmm. they took you in, you saw it and you came right back out and they took you back in again. And you, you know, yeah. moved around. you were establishing to yourself the fact that this place exists. Yes, yeah. I just created it and I can find it again because I created it and True. I know it's there. Yeah. So you keep reassuring yourself what you know mm -hmm. and that's how we look at reality you know i know that's a tree because for 50 years somebody told me what that is we all agree what it is now i don't know what you see when you look at it actually mm -hmm. but we agree on the description of how we're going to call it something and how we're going to deal with it in this incarnation so so you martin, like? martin says so good to see and hear you work has been hectic Huge upsurge in workload all at once, having Ooh. to be in all places at once almost, yet I'm never unhappy. Oh, that's nice. Martin, you are such a special person. I'm telling you, you are the happiest person I think I've ever met. Oh. Yeah. So I was, I had the privilege of spending a couple of days with Martin three years ago, coming up soon. I think it was in July of 2020. And I got to meet Martin and what a, what a sweet, wonderful man. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's really nice. All right, Martin, you and Audrey can get on a plane and come to England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I do want to do a little meditation. So I, I, I said this in the beginning, I, I need to pick up my grandson in a half an hour. So I definitely have to make this a short meditation, but right. along the lines, you know, of what Mickey was just saying, I, I want to have you guys know that that you can go and you can mm -hmm. see these things and and the power that you have as as an astral body but you have that same power when you're in your physical body too it's right. our our physical body tends to separate us from what our real abilities are but it doesn't have to. And by doing these meditations over and over again, short ones in and out, it, it, it blurs those lines, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes mm -hmm. to where you're almost walking with your astral body around your physical body yeah. and stuffed inside it, right? right? It's that little, and it's very subtle, but it's very real. And it's, it's been happening and, and I'm, I'm so fortunate that I'm able to do that. And I don't have to go to work and be 10 places at one time. And, you know, well, I, I just have that, you know. Don't forget to add everyone um, while you're in there. Don't forget to put in tools that you can work with. I've been coached while I'm there to add things to the fridge for me to use, you know, and other little machines and tools and things on the counter where you use it to enhance what you're doing when you're looking at your screens and everything. Mm -hmm. you know? So I even made myself a pair of field glasses where when I look at the screen through those, I can see ahead. Oh, how interesting. So that speaks to your intention, seeing mm -hmm. ahead. 
you see the intention actually come to be. Wow. Okay. So you're seeing into the future. You got future. Right. I love it. The future. Even yeah. though it's now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's a hard concept. Let's see. Martin says, love spending that time together. Wonderful memories. Oh, I do love everything England and the Isles. Ah, oh, yeah. lovely. Yeah. All right. I, I love it. Well, let's go. Let's go. Well, let's if go. we're going to head there, we just need to coordinate it. Right. <laughs> that would nice. be wouldn't it though? It would be beautiful. Oh, oh. All right. Well, let's, let's try going into, you know, just a short meditation. Yeah. Last times okay. was so long because I kind of got lost in it. <laughs> so it I was nice. Make sure, uh, it was nice, uh, but I want to make yes. sure I start it early enough so that I don't have to quit. quit. Right. Yeah. Well, this, this new moon is in cancer and it's, it's so much about your home life and your loved ones and so forth and what it is you want to put out there so that that will be adjusted the way you like it. So, you know, think of your family and stuff. I'm, I'm giggling at Audrey. She says, I've wanted to go to England since the Beatles. Me too. Oh. Me too. And That's Mickey and I just funny. talked yesterday and Mickey's actually only an hour away from Scotland. So she's very Northern. Um, Liverpool is more mid to the West, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm Western too. Yeah. Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was in Scotland, I was in Edinburgh. I, I was only an hour or so away from Mickey, but I didn't know her then. You You're know, right. Or right. I certainly would have been on a train for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So if I ever get back there, that's on my to-do list. When you get back there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I definitely will. I actually think it might be this year. Yeah, it might be. That yeah. might be yeah. very good. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's go in our labs and put that in. <laughs> yeah. So again, think about your intentions. Think about what you want to bring into your life. So, you know, Audrey, you're, you, you said that you had some family concerns. So envision the best outcome for whatever those concerns are, not the concerns themselves. It's the aftermath, right? right. Imagine your family healthy and wealthy and doing well and maybe at a swanky party or something mm -hmm. you know put put those intentions in there and and martin you can you can just think about being like the flash and you can just get from place to place to place <laughs> i can picture that uniform on martin absolutely absolutely yeah right yeah. audrey says got it <laughs> But just go ahead and close your eyes and just be in this space. Here we are together again. And take a deep breath in and out and relax. Just relax into this time. And let's go deeper by doing the three to one count. And again, it's breathe in. Visualize and say three, 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 two, 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 one, one, one. And now visualize a staircase with 10 steps going down into your heart space. Use your right hand, holding on to the wonderful wooden smooth handrail and notice underneath your feet, if you're in bare feet, thick plushy carpet, feel it between your toes. And let's just go down these steps slowly, one by one, 10, nine, eight, going deeper and deeper, seven, six, deeper, five, four, three, deeper and deeper, two, one. You find yourself in your meditation room that we have created several times ago. And I want you to just, um, you know, look around and 
add any items that you may want to add. Visit your lab, add any tools that you might need and, and anything you can think of will just appear. And, and that, is, that is kind of what I've been learning this week. It's if you think about it in this space, it just appears. That's manifesting in the spiritual realms. So you think about, I want to add get well pills. And there they are in a jar. And just place them in the refrigerator. Happy capsules. Whoa, look at that. There's a jar of happy capsules. Put those in your refrigerator. Anything that you can dream up, imagine, that you might need, do that now. Now know that you can go here, come back to this space anytime you want. Whether you listen to these recordings or you do it on your own, you are all very capable of doing it on your own now. So let's go back into the meditation room and either sit in your recliner or lay on your couch. Just get comfortable. Still with your eyes closed. And with intention, Allow your astral body to just slip out of your physical body. Just sit right up and get right up out of that physical body. And turn around and look at it. And thank your body. It's so good to us. And say to your ego, you watch my body. Keep it safe and I'll be back. Now I want you to stand in front of your quantum door. And I would like for your intention to be that you are going to meet your source on the other side of this door, whatever that means to you. And the door opens outward and I'm gonna to count to three and on the count of three, the door is gonna open and you're just gonna walk right out, jump out, fly out, however you get out this door. And you're going to join with your source. One, two, the door is opening. Three, it's all the way open. So just jump through that door. And just look around. You are within source. Now I would like for you to think about what you want to have manifest, the outcomes that you would like to see with concerns, with your life, with, with your families, whatever it is that you want to bring to your life, I want you to imagine what the end result looks like. Not how you get there, just the end result. Think about it. You're there. You're experiencing now that end result. You can interact or you can just watch like it's on a TV screen or a hologram. Now think of a different situation. Poof, you're there. And enjoy interacting with this thought that is now reality. And from there, you have another thought and poof, you're there. Interacting speaking, enjoying yourself. 
and all of a sudden another thought comes in and poof, you're there. Now I would like for you to think about coming back to your meditation room. Oh, poof, I'm there. And let the door close quantum door closed. You're in your meditation room. And it's just like, wow, what did I just experience? Process this feeling. It's a lot. And you will remember everything, every instance that you've experienced just now, bring it back and just feel yourself just encompassing your spirit body around your physical body. You and your physical body are now joined together. And allow your physical body to stand up with you and know that this is now your reality and you can bring it back to the room that you're actually sitting in and with each thought that you have you can interact as it becomes manifest to you. This is the way manifesting was always intended to work. Believe it, feel it. Be happy where you are because you can see the outcomes which are always positive. They're always good. deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth and again and let's stretch a little wiggle your fingers and toes and when you're ready you can open your eyes and come back to the room hi hi Mickey <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how to get this picture back on, but oh, I can see you. You oh, are. You on. I'm on. Well, you it's not showing on. to me. <laughs> oh no, I can see you. Can you see Mickey Audrey? Oh, Audrey says it felt very fast. It it felt oh. very fast to me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I loved it. I liked it a lot. That, that was nice. If, if, yeah, it was it was quick and it was like boom, boom, boom. And and we could we could do that anytime. Yeah, that was nice. Audrey says she can see you, Mickey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, nice. So how was it for you, Audrey? Did those concerns just poof away? Oh. I hope so. I hope so. So this is something that we can practice. And, you know, I remember Seth saying, I couldn't tell you in what book it was in, but he, he would say that in the realm where he lives most of the time, they would just think of something, an object, and it would appear. And, and they almost did it like a game, you know, oh, I can make this. And someone else would say, oh, I can make that. And, 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 and that's really the way it is. Um, Audrey says, good. I saw a positive outcome. Wonderful. Wonderful. And, and everything is a positive outcome because even outcomes that we may not like are lessons and they are positive in, in basically what they're doing or showing or our contract as to why we're even here. Yeah. As Mickey points out to me a lot. 
Uh, I love having you on my side, Mickey. Oh, I like being here. I I couldn't do it without this lovely community. It's just, it's everything. It is. Everything. It's wonderful. I mean, yeah, you you three guys, and and I I can't see if anybody else is listening or not, but you know, I I will tonight after I you know drop the grandson off at home, I will you know do all my magic and put it up so that people could watch it later on. So nice yeah yeah well i think we should probably draw this one to a close we've been on for almost 50 minutes now so i'm gonna get myself ready to go get my grandson and um i am so grateful you know for the three of you and everybody else that is listening watching now or in the future because that's just now too um, I'm just so grateful that everybody is learning this and they're helping me to learn this, right? Yeah. yeah, it's it's a nice concerted effort. I mean, you know, it helps me that we're doing it together. Absolutely. Audrey says, I love you guys. We love I you. Love you too. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Absolutely. So if anybody ever wants to talk about the Seth stuff with me, I am all in, you know, just, just, <laughs> just drop me a line. You don't have to wait for me, you know, just drop me a line. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. This was lovely today. It was, it was, it was a little impromptu. I didn't make a uh, event this time. So I'm sure some people didn't catch it right away. And I did it at the last minute. So people couldn't, change their schedules either but um you know they'll they'll see it when they're supposed to yeah. yeah everything in its own time absolutely yeah yeah i have my peeps here that's right i'm i am perfectly satisfied <laughs> <laughs> perfectly satisfied I, love, much. <laughs> I know i love all you guys martin says my source this time was a springy smiley little green tree Oh, frog, tree frog, a tree frog. Oh, how cute. With no worries. I love it. I love it, Martin. You are very special people in my life. All three of you. Thank I've you. had a couple of times lately, as I had mentioned to you, Kate, where I went in and the person who showed up for me, had, it was someone I knew, but they had the face of a lion, you know, um, Every now and then they have a different face that I'm used to that's some kind of symbol. So and and I I heard through a channeler that the Atlanteans in ancient Atlantia, not even the Atlantia that we know right. sunk, but prior to that, even the indigenous Atlanteans had the head of an animal and the body of a human. And I, thought, I had never, never heard that before. And then you came and told me about your meditation about the lion head. And immediately I thought, oh my gosh, it's an Atlantean. And that well, was the first thought I had. Think about how many of those Egyptian uh, shrapti or statuettes of the gods, they mm -hmm. had say the head of a raven and the body of a man or the head of you know whatever the lion is hathor and the, the cow and so forth so they often were depicted that way now i never thought about it being actual yes that they actually were in contact with someone who may have looked like that we think of it as a symbol they were just you know mm -hmm. bringing up a certain thing way of thinking about it but who knows that's right and that ancient past is so strange i mean if, there's so much we don't know right but if we can think it it probably is yes mm -hmm. somewhere there is a version of reality that includes that particular idiosyncrasy and we don't know martin says ganesh ganesh is his favorite oh yes oh that's one of my favorites right. oh that's the ganesh. elephant right yeah the elephant yeah, yeah, yeah. guard yep I love Ganesh. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. you know, we're just, we're just. My house is full of Ganesh. I have a lot of oh, that. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're just a product of that, you know, 
and and I I can't even say I guess it's evolution I don't know but it's not evolution the way science teaches it oh well you know what can yeah, we say I do yeah they're I coming do. around <laughs> they are. seems to be on a, a vector that is beginning to come together so yeah and I have to say it is two 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 right now here. oh okay so for you it's got to be seven 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 right I <laughs> know it's seven two two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Okay. You can't have a seven seven. No, but that would be kind of cool. Maybe there is somewhere in because time doesn't. Yeah, maybe if they're anyway. on a different base than a sixty minute base. Yeah. Too funny. Oh my god, seven seven seven. Anyway, it's two 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 right now. Oh, it's two two three. I missed it. Anyway, <laughs> I I gotta say I love you guys. I will hope to see you again in two weeks. I don't know where I'm going to be in two weeks. I'm going to be going to Lilydale. I don't know if I'm going to be there during the full moon or not, though. Um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm going for some women's events. So I have this yeah. Victorian dress that I'm going to be wearing. That one's in August. Um, okay. Yeah. That sounds nice. Yeah. Sounds nice. Hopefully somebody will get some pictures. You know. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. So that'll be good. Audrey, well, this was great. I enjoyed it. So yeah. good to see you, Audrey yeah. and Martin. Yeah. Huh. Oh, Martin says, love you all. We love you guys too. Thank <laughs> you for being here. And we'll see you in two weeks. All righty. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye bye. Hugs. Bye bye. Big hugs. Oh, boop, boop. Yes. <laughs>